Okay, so we have finished our midterm. Well done, everyone. So with this new project, we can go to modules or we can go to the home page, go to unit modules. We're going to be learning some new skills. Since the last thing we did were, were vector logos, we're now going to see other things you can do with vectors that are helpful and going to be combining it with some of our raster skills. So we're going to unit 11. It's only five units left after this. And this is a full color spot illustration. Now, what's the big difference? Like your logo, you're making something original here, something that's from your own hand, your own stylization. It can be inspired by other things, but it needs to be kind of your own portfolio piece. So a spot illustration is a free-floating, reproducible image. That's the definition of illustration. It's made to be reproduced. And if you look at like very famous books, like Harry Potter, In Harry Potter, at the beginning of each chapter, they have little spot illustrations. So these are an example, right? This is just in black ink on pretty, uh, pretty porous paper to make the print editions cheap. But at the beginning of the first chapter, they have this image floating above the first paragraph. Second chapter, third chapter, fourth chapter. So what is a spot illustration? It needs to be free floating. It is not locked into a rectangle. Even if it's something that shows setting, like this one, this figure running into the forest, notice how they choose the shape and how the tree is breaking free of that like dome of the sky. So you don't want to have it cropped off arbitrarily. You want to understand what that silhouette shape is going to be. If we look up monster spot illustration, you'll see a lot of free-floating images. And when you see them filling up a rectangle like these, that just means that they're a spot illustration on a background, right? But we're interested in just the spot illustration first, these free-floating. Now, the other thing we're interested in is learning how to use vector with raster. So to do that, we are doing uh, digital inking. So we're focused on line art. This is an example. It's like a coloring book page, right? A spot illustration of a monster, clean lines that then we will color behind with digital color. If we look at Behance, which is a great place to find a contemporary artist you might want to do a presentation on, and we look at these spot illustrations. These are free floating. They can go on any color background. These are sold as stickers. They can be sold as t-shirt designs. They could be tattoos, but they're always self-contained. Even when they have shadows underneath, that becomes part of the illustration. And then you can see the really clean line art, and then the pretty basic coloring. This is called flat coloring, and that's where we start our digital coloring. But it can get much more complicated. So I have some books where I have your scratch paper, where I have pencils. Uh, where you can see some sticker designs, some t-shirt designs, all of them spot illustrations, right? Not locked into a rectangle. So what does this look like for our project? It starts with a sketch. So this was uh, a spot illustration of Putin, but it's Putin on the Ritz. This is before the invasion of Ukraine, but it still fits. You can think of the Ritz as Ukraine. But you have a sketch, you have clean line art, and then you have digital coloring behind the lines. Here you have a refined sketch. This is a nice little octopus monster. Um, clean line art and then coloring within. So the coloring can be flat. It can be gradated. It can be complicated. Here we have a wolf man. But it should really showcase your personality, your interests. All right. These can be inspired by book illustrations. They can be inspired by uh, anime, by television cartoons. And the basic technique you can see on this handout, which is also under assignments under our supplemental stuff. We have these slides we'll be going through when we talk about how to color. 
But this image right here, I just do it with a really basic illustration of a lemon, right? So we're going to start with a sketchy exploration. I thought it said sketchy line. <laughs> so an exploration of the shapes you want, right? Because a spot illustration, just like your, your creature design, it's all about the silhouette. What shape does it take up? Then we're going to clean it up with line art, and we're going to make that line art into a vector. And there's a few ways we can do that. But it's a, another way for us to understand vectors. Then we're going to fill it with flat color. Then we're going to split the flat color up into highlights and shadows. That's called duotone, a uh, hard edged or cut edge color. Then we can play with softening those tones. That's called soft edge. Then if we want to go further than that, we can move it to full spectrum color. You see how the coloring here now has not only green, but also purple and yellow and brown in it. And then we can actually change the color of our line art with something called color holds. And then we're going to add an offset behind it, just like we did with our black logos, so it can show up on different backgrounds. And then we're going to learn about professional color separation through CMYK for four color offset lithography. So we're going to be learning a lot with this project, but it all starts with our sketch. right? And you can sketch it really, really tight. You can sketch it really loosely. It can be incredibly complicated. These are some professional examples, all three of these. And you can look at their work if you want more inspiration. But if we look at student past examples, this is the way I tend to like to work. You want to find some inspirations of the kind of thing you like. And then you want to start sketching either digitally or on paper. And then we're going to learn today how to turn that sketch into clean digital inking. And then we'll be able to add color. Aha. So our theme is indeterminate monsters. So by the end of this project, we're going to have kind of a catalog gallery of different versions. So when I picked out of the box, I got Manticore. Did anyone get Manticore in the class? All right, so I'm the only one doing Manticore. Now, a manticore, these are all kind of um, monsters from mythology. So a manticore is kind of a lion with a human face. But it often has other things added to it, like wings, crazy tails. It's kind of, I always kind of think of it like the Greek sphinx. So there are lots of different versions. And this is my chance to make my own version. But I can be inspired by these things. I can be inspired by how they show up in, in Marvel Comics. This is a manticore creature there. I can be inspired by how other artists might have approached it. But they all look pretty menacing, right? So I thought it would be fun, this one's a little bit cuter, to try to make a more whimsical example. So what I did was I chose uh, to kind of expand on that theme a little bit. And it's going to be me and my manticore, like it's a children's book. And this is someone, Dy Dynamite Dandy. But this is another kind of, so I want this kind of happy-go-lucky image, but probably not a 1930s American animation style like this one is. So what did I do? I started sketching. I made an assignment five folder. And this I sketched with pencil. And this is what I decided to do. So it's a manticore with kind of this weird tail, stars on its flank, these kind of spiky wings, and then this really crazy kind of mechanical saddle thing where I have my little minion-esque knight writing on the back and he has wings so i could sketch this by hand like i did or i could sketch it digitally i'll review how you do that if you remember basic shapes from when we did creature design that can help you to make any shape you want it does not need to be complex it can be basic all of it will work but it should show your personality you're going to have the option to turn these into t-shirts right 
So the goal is to make it into something that you would want to, to have, to wear, to make as a sticker and put on your laptop or your water bottle. That's the goal. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Not sure why I'm getting that blue shape glitch. But once it looks good, I'm just going to do a quick screen grab of it. Because I took this photo with my phone and then just brought it into Google Photos. But you can also use a scanner. And now with that screen grab, I'm just going to add it in to here. I want to see your sketch. Your sketch will be the first thing you upload. It's nice to have inspiration, but maybe you're just doing it right off the top of your head too, and that's fine. But inspiration is not a requirement. These things are the requirement. Refined sketch, clean line art, and then the color illustration at a high enough resolution for print. All right, so this is my sketch. I like to sketch by hand just because I'm kind of old school. That's what I'm used to doing. Uh, also, because when you're doing a sketch like this, you tend to erase a lot. But let me show you how I might set this up digitally. So if I open up Photoshop and I have my tablet, it's really, really difficult to sketch with just a mouse. I'm going to set it up to be the right resolution. So. I'm going to say File, New, and I'm going to make it at least 8 by 10. I might as well make it 11 by 14 because I'm creating it all digitally. I might as well do high resolution by 350 pixels per inch. Now, if you do 11 by 14 by 350, that means you can print on any of the three sizes we do in the class. So we have 11 by 14 inches by 350. I'm going to leave the background white. And then I'm going to make a new layer. And then I'm going to call that layer my sketched line. And this is called line art, you know, professionally, when you're just dealing with the finished lines. But first I have to sketch them. Then I'm actually going to lock the background by double clicking it, renaming it blank white, because I want to leave it blank white. That's going to be important when we color it, and then locking it with the padlock. Now on the sketched line layer, I'm going to take, I tend to do it in a, I'm old school, so when I do it digitally, I tend to do it with a blue color. And that's a remnant from when we used to use what were called non-photo blue colored pencils that photocopiers didn't pick up back before photocopiers were scanners. And that way you could draw with this blue pencil and then you ink it with black ink. You photocopy it and then you get a clean, you don't ever have to erase, you know, it was a nice technique. But here I'm just going to use blue line. I'm going to take my brush tool and I'm going to set my brush to just the typical general brush that is hard, round, pressure sensitive for size. So it's that one. I'm going to make sure that my size is large enough that it looks like a pencil eraser on my page like that. So around 100 pixels. So you adjust that all under this drop down for the brush, right? And then for hardness, I'm actually going to take its, well, no, I'll do the hardness at 100%, but I'm going to take its opacity down to about 70%. So this is how I digitally sketch. And if I wanted to sketch something, I've already kind of explored it and know what I want. I want this. So if, if this is kind of the idea that I'm sketching, or I'm looking at reference of how other artists have done manticores, then how might I approach it? So this is my pencil sketch. I like pencil because it's easy to erase and it's really, really easy with a nice mechanical pencil, which is what I use because it's always sharp, uh, to lighten your pressure and make really light lines. And you can see that. And what do I always start with? I always start with the cranium, right? That's the focal point of any kind of character. So I'm going to do the same with my digital sketch here. I can start with the cranium. Now, I don't.